Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Horrific Death of the Princess of Bulgaria Princess Maria Luisa of Bourbon Parma was the oldest daughter of Robert I, the final reigning Duke of Parma. However, at just the age of 29, inside of Bulgaria, she would die a tragic death, following giving birth to a fourth child in five years. She was a woman who had borne many children in a short period of time for her husband, Ferdinand I, the Tsar of Bulgaria. But she was also a woman whose body could not cope. She had a tragic demise inside of a country which was far away from her homelands. But what is the story of the death of the Princess of Bulgaria? Marie Louise was born in 1870 in Rome and was known as Maria. Luisa, Pippa, Teresa, Anna, Ferdinand, Francesca, Antoinetta, Margarita, Giuseppina, Carolina, Bianca, Luisa, Apollonina, de Bourbon, Palmer. She was given possibly the longest name of anyone in the 19th century. She was the oldest daughter of Robert I, the Duke of Palmer, and his first wife, Princess Maria, peer of Bourbon to Sillies. But it was expected that she would have one day to go on to marry an influential and powerful prince or king across Europe who would guarantee alliances for her royal family. At the time it was common for kings, princes and dukes to seek alliances with other ruling families through marrying their children in power plays which would also guarantee wealth and financial power. Marie's parents had 11 more children and six of these suffered from mental illness but later the Duke, her father, would remarry Infanta Maria Antonia of Portugal and they then had 12 more children. Maria Louise was just 12 when her mother passed away and she was then raised in the south of France and also in Switzerland with a number of English governesses raising her and overseeing her education. It was clear that one day Maria would be arranged in a marriage to someone powerful and because of this she learned a number of languages. In her spare time, she also liked painting and was a talented musician playing piano and guitar, and she was very well-read and intelligent. But in 1892, her father then arranged Maria's marriage and he negotiated her nuptials with the then reigning Prince of Bulgaria, Ferdinand of Saxe-Coburg, and Gotha. The marriage negotiations were overseen by Maria's grandmother and these were successful and the engagement was then celebrated at the castle of Schwartz, where the family lived in Austria for some time. But there had been a number of obstacles for the match with the Prince of Bulgaria. One of these was the fact Maria's family was staunchly Catholic, and they insisted that any children would be raised in the Catholic Church. Ferdinand was also Catholic, and he had been allowed to stay with this when he became the Prince of Bulgaria, but the Bulgarian constitution stated that any future prince must have been a member of the Orthodox Church. This meant that Thernanan's heir could not be raised Catholic, but then the constitution was amended for this. But her future mother-in-law was not completely impressed with the Princess Marie, and she wrote to Queen Victoria of Britain that Marie was unhappily not very pretty, and it is the only thing which is lacking since she is charming, good, very witty intelligent and very likeable. Their wedding occurred on the 20th of April 1893 and this took place at Maria's father's house in Italy. At the time she was 23 and was nine years younger than Ferdinand and quickly the pair consummated their marriage and almost nine months to the day of their wedding Maria gave birth to a son named Boris. But the marriage between the pair despite producing heirs and children is not considered the most happy match it was believed that Maria Louise's husband did not love her, but he secured his lineage on the Bulgarian throne, and they did this by having children. Ferdinand was under a lot of pressure from his subjects, and he was looking to be recognised by the Russian emperor as the Bulgarian sovereign. Ferdinand wanted his son converted to the Orthodox Church, but Maria Louise in 1895, when this was debated, was furious. She was pregnant at the time and she argued greatly against her husband's decisions and ideas and she spoke with her father, who was still very powerful across Europe. Marie-Louise and Ferdinand's second child was given Catholic rites after his birth, but she could not prevent the conversion of her first-born son and Marie, because of this, threatened to leave Bulgaria. She left Sophia for the French Riviera. 
but then she would return in May of 1896. In the following summer, she visited to London and she attended the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Victoria alongside her husband, and then she gave birth the following January to a daughter. But then in the July of 1898, she would visit Nicholas II of Russia with her husband and her four-year-old son. However, things were not great for her. Marie was trapped almost in a loveless marriage and was having child after child. Each pregnancy and birth she experienced took a toll on her and she would bear four children in five years. This was seen as a positive in society for her as she was providing the Bulgarian nation with heirs and spares. But the toll it took on her body was too much. Marie became in her final months delusioned with her life and greatly regretted her marriage and she was very unhappy. The fact she had four children in five years was greatly concerning for her. She was, around the January of 1899, suffering from pneumonia, which of course was very serious at the time, and following giving birth to her fourth child, things looked very bleak. Inside her bedchamber after giving birth, four hours after giving birth in fact, at just the age of 29, Princess Marie Louise died of pneumonia. Her body had given up, and the stresses of childbirth were just too much for her yet again. She was then buried inside of the Catholic Cathedral of St. Louis of France in Plovdiv in Bulgaria. The eldest son of Marie would go on to reign as the Tsar as Boris III for 25 years. She was a woman who was considered not the most attractive, but Maria Louise was a princess who made a good consort for her husband, who would become the King of Bulgaria. She was a woman who united her father's dukedom and a country, and the alliance was considered a fruitful one for both sides. But the pressure of Marie's status and the fact she became pregnant time after time, producing four children within five years, was too much for her body. Also, she was trapped in a marriage which was loveless, and it was rather a sad existence for a young woman who deserved more. She was also a woman who probably wanted out of her marriage, but could do little in the way of this, being trapped inside of a country which, for her, was a very, very long way from home. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.